Hello, everyone. Um, yes, my name is Sana, and I work for DigiDem Lab. And I'm going to talk about our goal of bringing together hackers and activists for social change. Um, so yeah, DigiDem Lab um, is placed in Sweden, in Gothenburg, and uh, we're basically a non-profit organization. Uh, so we don't get funding from any government or any company, which is important for us. And why we call ourselves a lab is because we want to be an open space for people to experiment their ideas. Uh, and we think that is important because uh, a lot of activists and people who are engaged in, for example, NGOs, are used to having to have uh, really structured proposals and ideas from the start. But we think that the best ideas are often made when you have freedom. Uh, so that's important for us. Um, so the people behind DigiDem Lab, um, this is the people. Uh, I'm going to give you a, a background story uh, so you understand uh, why we exist. Uh, we were started this year, so we're really new uh, in February this year. And uh, we were quite inspired when we were in Madrid and visited Media Lab Prado last year and did a project. I'm going to talk about that more later. Um, uh, basically, my colleague, Anna, who's here in the picture, she was working in uh, socially economically vulnerable areas in Gothenburg for 10 years, and she grew really tired of meeting uh, young people uh, who was let down by the politicians because uh, there was a lot of citizen dialogues where politicians would come to these neighborhoods, uh, these segregated areas, uh, and would come and pretend to listen to the young people, and then in the end, they wouldn't do anything. And she was really frustrated by this system and that the young people were never listened to. And at the same time, my other colleague, Petter, he, he had a web agency, a cooperative web agency, and was making websites for NGOs such as Doctors Without Borders, uh, UNHCR, and so on. And he was really frustrated that they were never asking for the right tools. They wanted these old websites, but he knew that it, it existed, like good digital tools to increase participation. So they start talking to do something together. Uh, where young people would be able to experiment with new tools for participation. Then they met me. Uh, I am a local politician in Gothenburg. I'm a member of the city council for the feminist party in Sweden. Um, and I've been in the city council for about three years, which is really hard, to be honest, because I'm an activist at the core, and I think it's really hard to be in the system and try to make change when I don't really believe in the system that we have today. Because um, I am a municipalist, and so uh, when we three met, me, met, we started to talk about not just changing the way of participation among NGOs and social movements and young people, but citizens, everyone. Um, so I'm going to talk more about how we do this. Uh, but first, because I think I'm the only one from a Nordic country, at least I'm the only one from Sweden that's going to speak today, I want to give you a context to uh, the political situation in Sweden, uh, because it's really different from the other countries. Uh, probably most of you, when you think about Sweden, you think about welfare, social democracy, equality, and I want to talk about two important points for, for how we work um, when it comes to the political system. The first point is that Although uh, Sweden's level for income equality uh, is, is quite low compared to international standards, to a lot of countries, uh, we have the fastest growing level of income equality among the OCD countries. This means that our welfare is slowly eroding. Uh, why is this important to know? Well, when we talk about all of these inspirational examples, from example, the, from Spain, Los Indignados, uh, from one of our Nordic countries in Iceland, what started their social movements was uh, a, a crisis, a huge economic crisis, something that led the people to take to the streets. But in Sweden, we, when we have the slow erosion of our welfare for, for so long, people aren't really noticing this crisis. It's not that visible, which makes it hard to engage people. Uh, so that's why we don't have a big social movement in the same way as, for example, Los Indignados, which is important to know when you want to work with these issues. 
another thing that's important to know is that even though Sweden is known for its IT knowledge, we export a lot of IT knowledge, uh, a lot of uh, people who are programmers and developers, uh, we don't really have this huge uh, activist hacker community, this civil, civic tech community, because a lot of these uh, developers uh, go into companies um, and this open source movement is not as big as it is in the rest of the world, which is what we want to change. And um, one of the issues that we have in Sweden today, I also wanted to, to add, is that we have a growing uh, um, wave of racism and right-wing uh, nationalism. And this is a picture from when the racist party, the Swedish Democrats, entered the government. And they were partying because they were so happy. And today, if you look at the polls, uh, the Swedish Democrats is the second largest party in Sweden. Uh, just mon one month ago in my city in Gothenburg, a, na a Nazi uh, organization were, was demonstrating legally because they are allowed to demonstrate in Sweden, even though um, you can, according to UN standards, you can forbid na Nazis from organizing. Uh, and this is important context as well to know that we have this huge problem, um, which is why uh, we, it's important for us to, to also work with equality uh, and be representative uh, in how we work, uh, meaning that we want to organize uh, people uh, who are marginalized as well to fight this racist system. So, what we want to do at Digidem Lab is basically work uh, around these three principles. Uh, building participation from below, uh, and this goes back to uh, the growing racism and uh, the issues with democracy, that we want to uh, organize the unorganized, the marginalized. And also that we believe that dialogue is not enough. We have to do more. Um, and the third one, which probably a lot of you already work with, uh, is that the tools that we use uh, has to be controlled and created by the citizens. So I'm going to give a short description on, on how we work with these uh, strategies. Um, so first of all, uh, we mentor young people. They can apply for funding and support uh, if they have ideas for projects. Uh, when it comes to increasing participation. A lot of the young people, uh, it's up, uh, under the age of 26, um, they will uh, look at different digital tools for participation uh, that they want to try out in their organization. I'm going to give you an example later of the tools. Uh, or it's just that they're interested in learning more about how to combine uh, digital tools uh, with democracy and trying out new methods. Um, and another thing that we do is that we, uh, we are a resource center for social movements. And it's kind of intertwined uh, with how we support young people because a lot of the social movements, we meet them and consult with them. We get to know their problems with participation. For example, they tell us that we, we have annual meetings and it's hard to get people to participate. We, we want to try a new digital tool uh, in order to create participation from, by distance. And we ask if they have someone under the age of 26, because then you can get uh, funding and that person can do research for how your organization could uh, improve their participation. And we give them examples of different tools that they could use and try out. Lumio is one of them that was mentioned before uh, as a way of creating proposals and discussions. Um, and from these pictures, I just want to give a short description. Uh, this picture here to the right is a group of students that we met. We were at their school and held a presentation uh, and presented a project that we wanted them to work on, which was about G1000. And it's funny to be in Brussels because uh, G1000s was originally started in Brussels, uh, as many of you may know. Uh, and later in Madrid, uh, which is really inspiring. And it's basically about creating a citizen summit. Instead of G20, you organize um, randomly selected citizens, which you, where you find on the streets, they come together and they put up proposals for how to um, improve the city. And we want to do that in Gothenburg. So these students are uh, thinking about uh, inviting someone from Brussels, actually, uh, in mon one month and holding a lecture to inspire people. Uh, so this is one of the things that we are helping out with. Um, and the other picture is from uh, the workshops that we usually do, where we meet social movements and we do tool sessions where we, we teach 
uh, how to use Lumio uh, or other tools, and we also give lectures. Um, so when we talk about different digital tools, uh, we also want to document the different tools so that others can learn uh, and know how to use them. So one example is that last year, uh, we were in Madrid uh, with Media La Prado, and we created this uh, website, uh, which is now called DemoCatMe, and it's based on a cat bot that will uh, ask you what your need is for your organization and uh, should suggest tools that you could use. And all of the tools are open source and they're about participation. How to create proposals, how to do polls to see public opinion, for example. Um, one of the tools uh, is, for example, police, uh, which is, has been used in Taiwan uh, as a way of um, seeing how different people feel about leg legislation. Um, so there, it's a lot of different tools. And when we do workshops with social movements about the tools, uh, and we have young people who do projects. Uh, we want them to document everything, their process, and put it up on our website so that other organizations will learn and uh, want to use the tools as well. Um, and so we, we also go around educating and lecturing uh, about participation. And what we do is that we usually start up by talking about Los Indignados, uh, the participatory budgeting process in Madrid, uh, inspiring examples from Taiwan, from Iceland, and this movement around the world, because so far we don't really have examples like that in Sweden, uh, but that's what we want to create. Uh, so we talk about that, uh, and then we do tool sessions, and we try to inspire people to start using uh, these open source platforms, these tools, um, and that's an important uh, part of our job uh, because right now, as I said, we're quite new. This is the first phase to uh, get people interested in creating a movement. And uh, speaking of movements, um, this picture here is from May this year when a conference in my city, Gothenburg, was held about participatory uh, democracy. And this is two people from Barcelona and Comú who we invited to talk about their struggles and their successes and how they have um, won, won power and, uh, and created a municipalist movement. Um, we also invited Massa Critica in Italy, uh, who, who is working with Commons, as was talked about before, because in, in Napoli uh, they have a new law which says that you can occupy any building that is not used by, by anyone and they've created social centers and housing. Uh, so we, we invite these movements to talk and to inspire us and then we talk about how we can do something similar in Sweden. And since that conference in May, uh, there's been another conference in Stockholm and uh, in March there's going to be another one in another city where they're going to invite Aora Madrid to talk. So there, it's something Something is happening in Sweden, and uh, we're part of helping out. So basically, we want to be the digital resource for these movements to create platforms for them, uh, similar to what they have done in, in Madrid and Barcelona. Um, and an important part of creating this movement, as I was saying, that in Sweden, we don't really have a a civic tech community. So that's part of our strategy, to create one of the these sorts of communities. Um, so we want to organize hackathons, which we are starting to do this spring, uh, around certain themes, uh, so sustainability, democracy, and we're going to have projects and then invite uh, people, uh, hackers, developers, uh, designers, citizens, uh, to develop tools together. Um, we have projects that are carried out by, by different NGOs, but also projects that we're going to do ourselves. I'm going to talk about one of those uh, later. Um, one minute, okay, let's skip this. <laughs> uh, so yeah, uh, talking about the tools. Um, yeah, basically these are our principles for which tools we, we talk about. Uh, uh, being open source, secure, uh, sharing resources. Um, and we're quite inspired uh, by um, by countries uh, such as Iceland, who was the first one of the first countries using a, a, a citizen platform. 
and also uh, Barcelona with the CDIM, of course. We just read that Helsinki, Finland, is going to use the CDIM platform uh, starting next year. So that's really exciting. So this was what I wanted to end with. Uh, we at DigiDem Lab um, are going to go to Madrid to, to improve console, uh, making it easier to uh, install and more user friendly. Um, and tomorrow, me and my colleague Vanessa, we're going to hold a workshop for those that are interested. Uh, so you can come and test console, which was the tool you know about it because they just talked about it. Uh, and test it and give your feedback uh, so that we can take our feedback to Madrid. So please register uh, for that workshop. Thank you. Thank you very much. Some questions, comments? The mic is coming. Hello. Um, thanks for the presentation, first of all. Um, I just wanted to ask you, like, regarding the civic tech community, I was wondering if you have any take on the work of the Swedish Pirate Party as, like, even the founding of the movement. It would be really cool to hear. Thank you. Uh, thank you. I, I actually guess that someone would ask that question <laughs> because, the, I mean, the pirate movement comes from Sweden. Uh, but we haven't actually established any, like, we, we have contact with them. Um, but, and we're open for them to participate, but we don't really have any collaboration or so. So a lot of the people we know have been active in the pirate community, but they're no, no longer really organized as a political party. Uh, but they exist, of course, uh, and we're happy if they want to join uh, our movement. There are still some places available for... Uh the workshop tomorrow, I yeah. think. So if people, where? I, I had I had one question. Um, one of the questions we Michel Bounds. One of the questions we heard a few times is the, you know, people are worried about digital, uh, let's say elites. Um, yeah, and. Um, so it seems to me, and I'm sure you agree, that uh, somehow the physical and the digital have to be combined. Um, but is there any lead about how to do this? Uh, you know, what are the protocols that kind of ensure that people who are not digital can participate with the same level as people who are more digitally en um, enabled? That's a really important question, and that's actually one of the most important things that we often talk about because a lot of the people we meet uh, are not uh, developers or ha ha don't come from the hacker community. So uh, first of all, no digital tool in the world can create democracy uh, because if you're not really uh, already um, good at democracy, a digital tool won't change that. So what we often talk about when we meet social movement is like to to see how their processes are ready. And uh, uh, for example, how do you welcome new members? Uh, how, how can members in your organization participate? Uh, and that is the first step before we recommend any tool. Um, and also, we are really inspired by this uh, G1000 method uh, in Madrid, where they actually combined. You could go online and vote on the Decide Madrid platform, but, but they also organized these thousand randomly selected citizens. Uh, and they have these 26 offices where you can go and uh, put up your proposals if you don't have a computer at home or if you're not used to using a platform. And uh, I think those things are really important. Um, and uh, my colleague Anna, for example, her, she, she is an expert on, on methods for how to um, do participatory meetings face to face. So we often combine those two, uh, even though a lot of the things we do when we're out is to focus on the digital because that's the new thing for a lot of people. They're not used to using the tools or the platform. So I hope that answers your question. You, you started by, um, with a slide where it was mentioned, mentoring the youth. And I was wondering, uh, when we're talking about how to do it 
digital and physical. Do you have a program for high schools? I mean, uh, if, if uh, becoming a digitally aware citizen and digitally active, I mean, uh, wouldn't be education the first step? Um. I think it's starting to become um, more popular. Like a lot of a lot of schools, they have data programming as courses. And uh, but I think the problem is that um, what you do, even though you, you you're studying a master for programming or developing, they don't teach you about open source. Source. Uh, they don't teach you about uh, all of these. Uh, like it's for very focused on companies working for companies, and that's the problem we see today that a lot of the, the people who are in a developing community, uh, they're captured by the companies because their programs are basically made for you to, to do for work for the capitalist and not for the people. So I think that's more of a problem that, than not having knowledge about technology. I think it's combining technology with, with civic, like creating civic tech, meaning that you learn how to use your technical knowledge in order to create open source uh, software for the people, for the citizens, uh, which don't, th this doesn't exist today. Um, and that's, I think that's a, a really important issue. Uh, and that's what we want to change uh, because we see this movement all around the world. Uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you, thank you very much.